all right all right all right how's it going guys so i'm an aka jim and welcome to a new tutorial video today i'm going to show you how to overclock an intel platform it works for both haswell and haswell refresh and probably will work for haswell skylake as well so first off i'm going to show you uh the software we will be using today uh it's a little bit different from my other tutorial when i was overclocking my amd platform uh the stability test software i was using back then uh, was prime 95 but prime 95 was proven to actually hurt <coughs> sorry uh it was proven to hurt uh household platforms mainly because it added up more uh voltage uh, even though i had set it, uh, a manual set voltage in bios uh so basically there's been different CPU tests or stress tests rather that you've been using for uh, instead of Prime 95 with other words yay all right so as usual we're gonna start off with CPU set as well it's the standard program you're gonna use it at every time you're overclocking you're just gonna use it and I'm gonna use real temp as well my temperature in EL mode right now is quite high, but it's mainly because I'm over. Uh, I'm not overclocking right now. I'm recording a video, and I'm doing it in 1080p 60fps. So it's taking a, a little bit of CPU performance. So you know. Uh, so why I like real temp is because you can see the temperatures and when uh, it happened. So let's say you've been overclocking and stress testing during the night. Uh, you can see when it peaked and how much it peaked at. So that's that's really useful, in my opinion at least, anyway. And we're gonna use, as I said, a new uh, stability test program, Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, or for short, XTU. And uh, this is, I never tested it myself, I've been using other softwares, but I've heard this is a really nice program. And uh, we're gonna use this today and hopefully it will work really really well so we're going to jump into bios and i'm going to show you the settings we will be working with today all right so here we are on the bios so we have a lot of settings here and uh, some of these settings you may not have them but that's probably mostly because i have a quite high-end motherboard and cost me quite a lot of money back when i bought it but most settings exists but they may be called differently from motherboard to motherboard so just uh, do some research and find out if my names are the same as your names pretty much right so the first setting we're going to look is the ai overclock tuner and you have three options here you have auto you have manual and you have xmp most people choose xmp here but you should not do that you should just leave it at auto and let it be Alright, so uh, the next setting we're going to look at is the CPU core ratio. Yours is probably put at auto, but you're going to change this to sync all cores. We're just going to leave the core settings for now. Uh, we're going to go down to the voltages. So here at the voltages, right here you have the CPU core voltage. And as you can see, my voltage at stock speed is 1.024 volts yours may differ and it may be differently either way you're gonna save you're gonna type up this uh, number on a paper uh, we're gonna use this later so you need to save this one point whatever number you have and uh, yeah we're gonna go from there pretty much Right, so we're gonna do a thing called a dirty overclocking, meaning you're gonna go from, you can switch this setting from auto to manual mode, and you're gonna go on 1.2 volts. After that, you're just gonna go to CPU cache voltage. It may be called ring voltage as well. And whatever number, that's the standard number on your motherboard, you're just gonna type that in the manual field as you did on the CPU core voltage. We're just gonna type for mine that's 1.207 volts. So I'm just gonna type that number. And now we're gonna scroll down until we find uh, the CPU spread spec spread spectrum, and you're gonna disable this. So 
so we're gonna go up now a bit and we're gonna go to the DRAM frequency I'm gonna put it at the stock speed as the RAM is put on so if your RAM is 1600 megahertz you're just gonna put it at 1600 all right so we're gonna do one more thing before we start all the clocking we're gonna change this CPU cache ratio to 35 so change the minimum and the maximum to 35 So okay now, now we're gonna do the overclocking. So you're gonna put this number, the core ratio limit, to 4 to 6, meaning it will be at 4 to 600. Um, the reason you put it at 4 to 6 and not 4 to 600 is because you have a base clock at 100 megahertz, and if you time 4 to 6 by 100, you get 4 to 600. Right, so that's pretty much how you do it. So I know for a fact that my CPU can't do 4.6 GHz at 1.2 volts. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go to and load my overclocking profile and go into Windows and I'm gonna explain from there how you're gonna continue your overclocking. Right, so we're back in Windows and we're gonna do this first stress test at 15 minutes. Before we start though, uh, one of two things happened during the boot up. Either you crashed meaning you're not stable at 1.2 volts at 4 to 600 megahertz or you got into windows on your first try and that's pretty much kudos to you amazing well done so for the people who didn't get into windows you go back in bios and you decrease the multiplier by one and then you try again so you do this until you get into windows Right, so when we're in Windows, I'm gonna do a first stress test. We're gonna go into Intel Extreme the Tuning Utility. Uh, we're gonna open up Real Temp and CPU Set as well. Uh, you're gonna go into the Stress Test tab and you're gonna put at 15 minutes and you're gonna start the test. And now you're gonna watch the temperatures so they don't exceed 85 degrees. Going between 70 to 80 is fine, but don't exceed 85 for a longer time, a period of time. And um, so during these tests, one of two things is going to happen again. Either you get through without a problem uh, or you crash during these 15 minutes. And if you crash, you have one of two choices. Either you increase the voltage, meaning it will be a greater uh, heat output on your CPU uh, it will be warmer with other words or you decrease the multiplier by one uh, either way it's gonna give you stability however if if you're like me and feel happy with an Intel platform that's an amazing freaking CPU uh, I have a 4770k and it's an amazing CPU it's with great speed I'm, I'm satisfied with 4400 in core speed 4 to 400 megahertz is done deal for me, pretty much. Alright, so this is pretty much how you're gonna do until you feel you're done with the overclock. Uh, so if you crash, you increase the voltage or you decrease the multiplier until you feel you're stable. And you always increase the voltage by one each time. And uh, when you feel satisfied with the overclocking, uh, you're gonna do a 12 hour stress test um, at least 12 hours stress test and when you're done you're completely done with everything we're gonna go back into BIOS and we're gonna talk about some other settings and I'm gonna stop the stress testing here for me now I'm gonna stop it and I'm gonna go back into BIOS alright so back in BIOS we can now do some different settings so we're gonna start by going down to the CPU core voltage and you can see right now I have mine on adaptive mode and yours is still at manual mode 1.2 volts. Uh, what you're gonna do, you're gonna take these 1.2 volts and subtract the original volt that you earlier typed up on a paper. So you're gonna do 1.200 minus, in my case, one 
point zero two four, leaving me with well a number, and that's the number you're gonna put on the adaptive mode. So whatever that number is, uh, you're just gonna do that in the adaptive mode and just plus la 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 until you get to the point where it's the same volt. If you don't understand what I mean, I have a full description down in the description box below the video. So take a look at that if you don't understand what I'm what I'm saying. So when you're done with that, with with this, with this so when you're done with that with the real overclocking, you can start playing around with the cache ratio and the memory as well. And as you can see right on screen, I have my CPU cache ratio at 4 to 1 and my DRAM frequency at 1866 MHz. And uh, uh, luckily for me, I could actually, if you remember earlier, we put the ring voltage or cache voltage at 1.2. And I'm a bit lucky because I have mine at uh, a number below 1.2. So that's just good. 4.1 GHz. Uh, in cache ratio as well, and as I said, 1866 MHz in the memory. I increased my memory voltage as well to 1.58, but you may or may not have to do that as well. But that's it guys, that's really it with the Intel platform, that's how you overclock an Intel platform. And I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and uh, I finally found time to do it. It's been a year since the last time, but I finally found the time to do it. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. Peace! Uh, it doesn't all, uh, just increase the megahertz of your CPU speed, but it also increases, uh, for example, HTLink speed which is